Is it the right time to pre-order a Ineos Grenadier? Or is it a pig in the poke? Or should we buy a Defender? Hope you enjoy the video! Now, is the Ineos Grenadier pre-order getting you to buy a pig in the poke? That's what we want to talk about in this video. What's a pig in the poke? And here, when you look it up in Wikipedia, it's pretty much a thing that is bought without first being inspected and thus of unknown authenticity or quality. Well, I think some of that applies here, doesn't it? We didn't even look underneath the hood. There was actually no opportunity to look under the hood when we looked at the vehicle at the Abenteuer Allrad Expo here in Germany last week. And that is suspicious, okay? They take the vehicle to a show they have the final show cars there, or at least a good condition show car and not the B-level prototypes, what everybody drives around. And then they put a fence around it and you can't really get close to it. So yeah. it has that pick in the poke kind of feeling. Um, just so everybody understands, in Germany we call this a cat in the sack. And in other countries they all call it something different. I like the Chinese, they call it buy a cow over there in another mountain. <laughs> That's <laughs> that, good one. <laughs> that, that sure makes it clear, okay? Don't buy anything across the mountains. In Maltese, it's called to buy the fish in the sea, okay? Apparently, there are no cows and there are no pigs and there are no cats there, so. Now, when we talk about buying a cat in the sack, it's a risky buy and we gotta decide now for ourselves and maybe help you guys to decide if it's the right time to pre-order the thing now. The pre-order is pretty much 2,500 euros. So far it was like only a reservation fee which was less, I don't know exactly how much. But for 2,500 euros you can get yourself on the list now and that's what's called a pre-order in Germany which means you do not have a final buying contract with them. When we look at the terms and conditions which you have to agree to when you place your pre-order for 2,500 euro in Germany, they send you this writing and it says here the reason for the down payment, okay, they call it a down payment, is you can configure your vehicle according to your wishes. Then, they say, they will secure you a production slot. A production slot is a date, I would say. Then, they will indicate to you the final price of the vehicle, which can still change. I think that's quite an essential wording, okay? Yeah. If they write this in their terms and condition, it means that the price, what the Ineos Grenadier configurator gives you right now, is not the final price. It may not be the final price. Well, it, it says clearly in here that the price can still change. Yes. I think if it changes or not, they don't know that yet. But with the inflation we got going on right now, and if your pre-order is dragged out for a long period, let's say for six to eight months, because your production slot maybe moves far into the next year, I think it's very likely that this price is going to change. How much? Nobody knows, but probably they would explain it based on the inflation, which is easily going to be 8%. When I looked at the terms and condition in the UK, that's the other side I could access in English, it was not as clearly stated, in my opinion, as in the German wording. But I also think the price in the UK is not 100% final when you do your down payment. On the pick and the poke scale, I would say this is on a three. One meaning the best situation, ten meaning the worst situation. So I don't necessarily like that. This pre-order is not a final contract. So if the price increases significantly, we'll get our down payment back and just not go through with the order. That's how we are going to handle it. That is the logical consequence. Let's say we are rich people, which we are not, mm -hmm. and we wouldn't care so much if this price is going to alter by 10% or whatever. And really, when you look at this kind of a vehicle, there are not so many options out there on the market. You can think about a G-Class, but it puts even rich people out of range. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. The next closest vehicles you can potentially select compared to an Aeneas Grenadier 
is really the Defender and the Watt Cruiser in, in our world, okay? Mm -hmm. Over in the US you have other options, but over here you really don't. You, you don't want to buy a Jeep over here. This is a completely different vehicle. It's more rated as a fun car. It's way overpriced. You don't get the good engines in it over here. It's a different size vehicle too, in my opinion. Nothing against Jeeps. We love them. We had nine years. No, we had seven years of Jeep. Yeah, and two yeah. years at Durango. Comparing it now with the Defender and the Land Cruiser, we really got to look into pricing and lead time. And let's cover lead time first, because we're talking about the pick and the poke. Do you trust the lead time they give you, the production slot, um, when you pre-order your Ineos Grenadier? Probably not. <laughs> uh, probably not. I don't, okay? I certainly don't. If they give me a production slot end of this year, I don't know where I would end up. Maybe you guys already know because you placed your pre-order. But I've seen pre-orders from friends around here and they got a production slot in September. Do I believe that? Hell no. Is it possible? Yes. You know, it's possible that you win the lottery. Do I believe that the delivery performance is going to be better than buying a Land Rover? Hell yes, of course. <laughs> when you go to the Land Rover configurator, the first thing they're going to hit you is production delays caused by computer chip shortage. And you got to click on this. And whatever you do there, you got to click on it. And you click on it over and over again. Yes, I agree. Yes, I confirm. Yes, I understand. You can't deliver. So if you order your Defender right now, they're not going to be delivering on time. So you probably still be in better off in a startup company like the Ineos because they will do much more, they will put out much more effort to deliver yeah. on time. If they miss their deliveries, the reputation will be extremely bad to them versus when you miss your delivery on a Defender. Well, it's just no, another <laughs> missed delivery. I mean, what the hell did you think that they're going to deliver on time? There's no surprise. So I think Ineos being smaller, being a startup automotive company, being funded in completely different ways and being put in a new position in the market where they have to prove themselves. I think they're going to do a much better job yeah. getting you the vehicle as early as possible. If you throw in the Toyota Watt Cruiser, um, when you compare the vehicle lineup, it's certainly also the most boring vehicle, okay? We, we discussed this so many times on our channels. We love Toyota Land Cruisers, but they're just not for us, okay? On our channel, you're never gonna see how we make coffee. There are plenty of channels out there where you can extensively see how to make coffee at the beginning of the video, in the middle, and at the end. We actually always scroll forward then. Yeah, from one coffee making scene to the next. Yeah. In the lead time area, you're going to be certainly moving around in an unknown time right now. And who knows if you're going to get your vehicle, but it's somewhat true for all of them. Let's go back over to pricing. I'm sure you guys all went through the configurator for the Ineos Grenadier. And I think it's really a decent configurator. I think they did a pretty good job. And when we look at the prices, what they offer, we got to think about, are they now, first of all, competitive? And I can tell you from my point of view, the value of the vehicle is extremely good. If we talk about pricing, we need to understand a little bit how car manufacturers design their price. What they certainly don't do is look at their manufacturing cost and then add a certain markup and then sell it on the market for that value, okay? All of you who think that is how prices are designed, it's not the case, okay? What car manufacturers do, all of them, they work by market prices. Basically, they design their price based on what the consumer is willing to pay. They all do that. In special cases, they may even sell a vehicle below their manufacturing cost if it positions them in a certain market slot. What did Ineos do with their prices? How did they position themselves? They checked out their competition and they positioned themselves in between the pricing of the competition. And because their vehicle is unknown, 
They use this as an advantage, but they also have a disadvantage. The disadvantage is they cannot go to the top end price with their vehicle. People will think, oh my God, this thing is even more expensive than a Defender. Let's stay away from that. We'll stick with what we know and we wait till a few vehicles are out. No, they can't do that. They had to get into an attractive position yeah. with their prices. Yeah. We've chosen the bare bone utility with the differential locks, with a tow hitch and one or two options. And the utility version in Germany actually has five seats yeah. versus the utility version in the UK has only two seats. They have to buy the station wagon. But on the other hand, their station wagon is mm -hmm. the same price as our utility. Yeah, their so, station wagon is much cheaper and here the station wagon is almost 10,000 euros more. The bottom line is we come out to a price of 65,875 and that's a base price. You think that's the base price? You oh think that's no, it? that's it. Oh, okay. that's a good price. Yeah, you scared me. Okay, <laughs> oh, <God>. well, <laughs> we don't have this kind of money, okay? The money we got is we can sell my Land Rover Discovery 4. If we're lucky, it gets us over 20 grand because it's still less than 100,000 kilometers. Yes. If you think about how the market price will develop down the road, once this vehicle is established, that price will go up. Okay. And then we definitely cannot afford that car. It will go up because it's below the competitor prices. It will go up because of inflation. And it will go up because they will have to make more money to cover their production costs in future. Right now this is a designed price. The startup of this vehicle was way more. I think this price will go up significantly. How much? Well, at least the inflation within one year, so we're talking 8% but probably more like 15%. Which means if you pre-order now, they're not gonna give you that increase right away, I think. They're gonna give you maybe, if your production slot is dragged out over a long time, they give you a few percent. Because they cannot afford you canceling your order. So I think this is a low entrance price in the market. And if I want to make now the price look cheap to me, the easiest way I found is to configure Defender. <laughs> yeah. We went through the Defender configuration. This is the Defender we configured. It's a 110 SE. That is basically the base four-door model with the large three-liter diesel engine. Okay, they also have a diesel with only 200 horse and we want at least 250 horse. We also want to be competitive and compatible to the Defenders or not choose the cheap Land Rover and then the expensive. This one has nearly the same horsepower and data as the Grenadier. And this base vehicle is already way more expensive and by putting in the necessary options and that would include here air suspension which is not an option, it's based equipped with air suspension and it puts it to whopping 81,800 euros. Okay. Man, that Grenadier is so cheap, I think yeah. we can order it now. Well, the base price for the, for the Defender is 77,900. And the finished price for us in the Grenadier was 65,900. So that's, that's where already 12,000 yeah. euros more. That's where you <gasps> can see how the entrance price is just awesome from the Grenadier. And the vehicle, of course, doesn't have all that technology what the Land Rover has, but as an enthusiast, we want more like an off-road rig. And if you think down the road, what will be happening with the value of your vehicle you bought? You yeah. are 100% better off with the Grenadier compared to a Defender. We know household, <laughs> household yeah. Land Rover prices can drop significantly yeah. when those bings and bongs come on. Okay, it comes <laughs> in serial condition already with a set of bings and bongs and check engine yeah. lights. So once you drive this thing off the factory floor, your loss is already higher than on a Grenadier. It, it's still an awesome vehicle and it beats the Grenadier in many, many technical ways. Okay? It has air suspension, which we are used to. <laughs> yes, we're going to have to give up air suspension, but we get solid axles in return. We still have my Discovery 3 if we want a smooth ride. Yes. <laughs> That's my recommendation if you want to convince yourself that the Grenadier is low priced, just configure a Defender. Long term value of the Grenadier, 
what could go potentially wrong. You bought this vehicle, you got an early lemon with a bunch of problems. They may struggle to resolve those problems. Who knows? You can't really say that this thing is going to work out of the door. The company gets in financial problems within two or three years that, and you're still dealing with those problems and they go out of business. That's the ultimate worst scenario, yeah. I think, if they go out of business. You're stuck with this vehicle. I would say even in this case, if you got a production version with all sorts of problems in it, that thing is not going to go down in value, for sure not. You can put it in a museum right away and charge whatever you want. It's a DeLorean. So, that's my opinion in regard to keeping the value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we do order that car and it gets delivered at one point, this car will never ever ever gonna see a workshop again. Any certified workshop. Oh, yeah. This brings us to one important item on the pick in the poke topic, okay? What's gonna happen with the warranty? The policy of our YouTube channel is that once we have a vehicle, it will never ever see a workshop again. Except for a recall. Except for a recall, except for free work on it, yeah. and except for warranty work. But how will Ineos deal with the situation when we're going to tell them from day one, look, we're going to do our oil change ourselves. If they void the warranty based on this, it would not be in compliance with what they promote on their website right now. They promote that they want to put their customers into a position where they can fix the vehicle themselves. Right next to the warranty clause. Yes. Okay? It's right next to each other on the website. <laughs> so how are they going to deal with that? Because I think they do want to see the vehicle once a year. Which they can get it from me. I'm going to give it to them once a year on time. And I'm going to do everything. But I'm going to tell them, you don't need to change the oil. I already changed it. You don't need to fill the water, I already filled it. I already <laughs> inflated the tires, but in general, policy of our channel, no workshop is going to touch our vehicle. So let's say the navigational screen goes dead after some time, some nice Land Rover electric problem in a Grenadier. What's going to happen then when we take it to the shop? Are they going to tell us, well, sorry, dude, you didn't bring your car for an oil change, it's out of warranty? This would be really interesting content on YouTube because I think nobody else will really try that. But it's our policy. It doesn't say how they will behave if we want to claim a warranty repair on the navigational screen but we did the oil change ourselves. I think that's a pick in the poke. But we'll find out. Do I have on my list? We are on item 3 of item 17. But what I wanted actually to say with the workshop and the repairs, if Ineos goes down the drain in a couple of years. It goes down. Okay, <laughs> let's hear out Vera. What happens if Ineos goes down the drain in a couple yes, of years? Yes, and we are not worried because we can handle that car ourselves, but other people cannot. They we are dependent on a service network. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I think they're going to be okay because the car is not that difficult to repair. I think the bigger problem would be spare parts if they go down the train, okay? <laughs> because there will be particular parts no longer available. This car is not going to have problems with axles and durability. They use Brembo brakes. They use Conti shocks. The ZF HPA transmission. They have the BMW inline six. That's when even a Toyota driver gets goosebumps and, and looks at his feet shaking his head. Jeez, and I only got like a four cylinder two point. An inline six diesel from BMW out of that series. Optimized for off-roading. I really, really think there's not gonna be any problem with that engine. One more topic I want to hit on. The taxes of the Grenadier are the highest in Germany compared to the Defender 110 wow. and also compared to the Land Cruiser. Our LR4 is far cheaper than all the other vehicles. That's because of the build year of 2013. Different rules apply to older vehicles in Germany. Newer vehicles are basically taxed based on their CO2 emission and because mm -hmm. the Grenadier it's has the highest. the highest CO2 emission, it has the highest tax. And in addition, talking about the pick and the poke, the Grenadier reserves the right 
to alter the CO2 emission, okay? When you later on want to license or register your vehicle in Germany and they increase the CO2 throughput on this thing, the price is going to go up what you pay in taxes. That's why this is really not a good thing that they don't nail this down. Comparing the fuel consumption of the three vehicles. <laughs> I have to yeah. say something. <laughs> Look at here. It's a Toyota, what cruiser? Oh, so that D <laughs> is on purpose. The Grenadier by far takes the most gas. And the reason I want to point this out is that the range what Ineos right now reports is not a guaranteed range versus the gas consumption on the other two vehicles is pretty much a guaranteed range. It's again a little bit the pig in the poke, yeah, or the cat in the sack or the cow across the mountain. Um, the number I picked here in this table is not the highest one re they report because it also depends on certain options in the vehicle. Oh my god. Yep. Take note here that the Defender is having by far the best gas consumption, okay? Defender beats the others. And the Defender also has the most horsepower. Let's compare the weights. The weights, I think, is for overlanders a very, very important aspect and I was quite surprised how good really the Defender is compared to the other vehicle here. First of all, the Land Cruiser vehicle is not really given with a precise weight. It's given in a range, so you can have from the best to the worst load capacity on the Watt Cruiser. And that's a big range. So if you buy a fully equipped vehicle, you can only load 580 kg. So good luck with that for overlanding. Versus the Grenadier comes with a stunning 760 kg rated right now. But remember, these are exactly some of those parameters which are not etched in stone right now. If you place your pre-order, they have the right to revise those numbers. But I think they're going to do everything they can to maintain that load capacity. And they also come with a roof load of 150 kg. That this is, is really, really impressive. Until you look at the Defender. If you buy the Defender with the off-road tires, you get a dynamic roof load capacity of 168 kg. This is unheard of. This is really, really high. And then the load capacity on the Defender also beats by far the Grenadier by whopping 49 kg. This is, you can take one Vera extra with you. Yeah. When you compare it to a Land Cruiser, because you're not gonna buy a naked one, it also beats the Land Cruiser by far. So taking a look at technical data in most aspects, lets the Defender look the best. If this is ground clearance, Defender is the best. If this is wading depth, Defender is the best. That's all we have to say about that. I wonder about the wheel bearings actually, because that's like our thing that breaks the most. Okay, I cannot tell you really a lot about the wheel bearings, but check out this document, what I received here. They basically already published a technical training product information for the engine they use. Whoa. And this is really impressive. Try to get something like this from a Land Rover this is a really impressive document because it explains the engine technology down into the detail. And here you can see um, in detail how everything in this engine is done and how it works. So I can't tell you what the wheel bearing looks like, but I can certainly tell you anything you want to know about that engine. Oh, cool. But I have to say, yeah. and I just found out that Christian purchased the cheapest wheel bearings on the planet. So no wonder they are always breaking. That now is completely I spent... <laughs> out of context. Okay, yes. I purchased a really expensive one and the cheapest one to compare those two. Yeah, but the, the expensive one is still inside. Yes, and it didn't break, so my <laughs> comparison break. is not done, okay? The cheap one broke after like six months. I have to wait until the expensive one breaks. We are not just... going to have any problems fixing that engine. Oh no, they, 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 we're going to have a problem that. that this engine will never break and we're out of work. So that's about it. As for LR time, if we consider getting a Grenadier, the mall crawler will be gone. The vehicle is an expensive vehicle to own because of taxes and because of the invest we have into it. We paid a lot for it. And the LR3 is really a low-cost vehicle for us 
easy yeah. to maintain. So we're gonna keep that one. It also provides good and decent content, I think, and we love the car. And it's already um, built up. <clears throat> yeah, so the mall crawler, if we pre-order the Grenadier, the mall crawler will be sold. The <laughs> mall <no> crawler <laughs> has not given us really good opportunities um, to create content. We have a cleaning video. We, um, we did this one big major the repair for the oil sensor. That's a really good video. One of our best ones, I think, in my opinion. On the Grenadier, the content we would provide would be how do you get a baseline Grenadier for the lowest possible price and make the options which you could also purchase yourself. And we would publish drawings on how to make them. You know, we would build our own um, side guards, we would build our own ladder, we would build roof our rack. own roof rack and yeah. all these kind of things because that would be cheaper to do and it would hopefully offer features and functionality which you can't purchase. Yeah. So that would be the idea. I think it would be a great vehicle for content in our channel and would, it would give yeah. us the pon potential to grow. But that all depends on how a video like this will now go on YouTube. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, maybe even forward it. Think about subscribing to our channel. That's it. Hopefully there was some content interesting for you. And we again thank our patrons very much for their support. They make in general our YouTube life possible. Yes. And we'll see you next Sunday.